So Outriders is on the horizon, and it's a game I'm pretty certain you are interested in to a degree. It's a game which is the newest to a very popular genre, and well it's a game many people are excited to see if it fills that hole many of us have at the moment with this genre. Some feel it just might. Well today guys I bring you a video in which we take an in-depth look into each class this game has available. While at the same time I won't tell you what to use, I hope my video helps you decide what class you will play with if you do decide to pick this game up. Or at least after you've watched this, even if you're still undecided about this game, you at least get an insight into what this game is, how deep these skill trees and builds can go, as well as the depth fee customization here. How's it going guys? My name's DPJ and if you enjoyed this video, leaving a like really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more Outriders, be sure to subscribe. So this next gen ready third person looter shooter which offers a lot of what we like releases on April 1st but we'll have a free to play demo which opens up on the 25th of this month of February. This means you don't have to pre-order the game to try it out to see if you like it. In this video like I said I won't tell you what class you should be using I'll we'll just try and assist you in which class will suit your needs while giving you guys all the information on each class what they do and offer. So within this game there are four classes to play with in total. The Devastator, the Pyromancer, the Technomancer and the Trickster. Now it's important to remember these four classes each come with massive skill trees which split into three paths where you can select from each with each build. And there are upwards people here of 50, 60 or even 70 perks within these skill trees guys which will enable multiple different styles in which you can set up and play and the general gist of each class is very very different. Each class also has class traits too as well as 8 special abilities known as anomaly powers. So let's get into the classes guys and we're going to start with the devastator. So the Devastator is a close range class that's built to stand its ground, take points and defend its allies. The Devastator's class trait grants 24% health for each enemy that died at close range and also grants 25% max health bonus and a 30% max armor bonus. So the Devastator is a class based around gravitational and earth based powers and effects and like all classes in the game like I said it has those 8 powers. These like all classes too, you'll start with one and unlock them as you play. These powers we will check out in a second with what they offer, but let's first look at the skill trees. So the three skill trees we have with the Devastator are the Vanquisher, the Warden and the Seismic Shifter. The Vanquisher is all about being up close and personal and dealing as much damage as possible with your arsenal. This path offers bonuses to improve in the effectiveness of high power weapons like shotguns and assault rifles, as well as enhancing your melee and close range attacks. The Warden is the best support path for the Devastator, specialising in incredibly high bonuses to health, armour and resistances. It also provides buffs to your protection powers and is ideal for drawing enemy fire without having to worry about puny bullets. And the third one we have is a Seismic Shifter. If you love dealing damage but don't want to get too close, this path is for you, it said. Seismic Shifter is a mid-range damage over time specialist that focuses on buffing your seismic skills and anomaly damage output. So this class fills the role of the typical tank, but it is in my opinion much much more than that. A close to mid-range specialist class in my opinion, as the Devastator controls gravity and can manipulate the earth itself. He's a specialist like I said in that damage over time and explosive damage as well as sustaining and improving his own defenses the more he slaughters the enemy. So let's check out those 8 abilities or anomaly powers that the Devastator offers. So first up we have Gravity Leap. This is perfect for getting in and close or at the same time getting out of danger in a hurry. This power lets the player leap high into the air and enter a first person point of view here you'll then be able to pan the camera around from your perch in the air, highlight an enemy and come crashing down with the force of a meteor, sending a shock wave from your point of impact. The second ability is called Reflect Bullets. Here you generate an energy shield of anti-gravity that suspends all incoming bullets in the air. When this power runs out or ends, all collected bullets are fired at nearby enemies. The third one we have is called Impale. Here the Devastator rips a sheer spike of stone out of the ground directly beneath the enemy. 
The fourth one we have is called Endless Mass. So the Endless Mass sees the Devastator summon a swirling stone obelisk that generates its own gravity field and pulls nearby enemies towards it. The fifth one we have is called Earthquake. Here the Devastator drives his fist hard into the ground and sends a rupture in a long reaching cone forward, damaging enemies and knocking them back. The sixth ability is called Golem. So the Golem ability reinforces your armor with a hard layer of stone ripped out of the ground. The seventh is called Tremor. An activating Tremor will see a wide area centered on you begin to burst and rumble with a small quake, knocking enemies to the ground around you as it continues to pulse and keep them off guard. And the eighth ability is called Boulder Dash. Charge forward to interrupt all enemies in your path. At the end of the charge you will smash the ground dealing damage to all enemies in a small radius. And that's what we have for the Devastator class people, a mighty class which at first glance, if we're honest, you'd think would be the tank of this game. But with a little mixing up, this can be as deadly as any other class in the game. It can offer speed, killing power on so many different levels, as well as being that goliath you think it might be. So guys, it's getting hot in here, so we're gonna have to move on to the Pyromancer. So the Pyromancer is a medium range class that can control fire, cover its foes in flames, incinerate entire squads and heal your wounds as enemies fall into your inferno. So the Pyromancer as its name suggests means fire fire fire. Now these don't have the speed to be in and out of the battle as quick as some classes in this game, so are best used for that mid range, but also incredible at killing off groups of enemies at the same time as this class specialises in area of effect and damage over time. So the Pyro's class trait is, grants 15% max health bonus and a 10% ability power bonus. Additionally, skills mark damage enemies for 15 seconds. Killing a marked enemy earns 24% healing. So the three skill trees we have with the Pyromancer are, Ashbreaker, Firestorm and Tempest. So the Ashbreaker. This path is all about increasing your damage output against enemies you have marked with one of your abilities. It also enhances the effectiveness of your anomaly powers. The second one is Firestorm. The Firestorm path is all about amping up the damage from the burning status effect and the damage output of all your skills and anomaly powers. The third one is Tempest. The Tempest lets you make a viable tank build of the Pyromancer, buffing your health pool and greatly increasing your defense so you can take the hit and offer Hellfire in return. So the Pyromancer's gift of controlling volcanic energy, combined with their tactical prowess, make for an explosive and a lethal combination if set up right. It's a class for players who like a bit of close up action, but are best effective at medium to semi long range. With the power of the Human Torch, you will truly set the battle ablaze, guys. And with the assist of the eight powerful abilities, two things just heat up even more. Those eight abilities are Thermal Bomb. So here the Pyromancer strikes the ground as rumbling volcanic energy races towards a single target. The target then is engulfed in flames and blasted with the burning effect, marking them while they take damage. If the enemy dies while marked, not only will the Pyromancer heal, but the effects of the Thermal Bomb will cause them to levitate off the ground, charge with an explosive energy and burst into a spray of blood, dealing a large radius of damage to nearby targets. The second ability is called Ash Blast. A burst of ash floods out around the ground in an area of effect centered on the Pyromancer. Any enemy caught in the blast is immediately covered in smoldering ash and frozen in place for a few seconds. The third one we have is called Heat Wave. So Heat Wave summons a small wall of flames that burst from the ground and races forwards in a line, blasting every enemy in its wake and hitting them with the burning status effect. Fourth we have Overheat. So overheat will cause minimal damage to enemies within a very large area. However, any enemy within this range who currently has the burning status effect when overheat is triggered will immediately burn white hot and take severely massive fire damage. The fifth ability is called Volcanic Rounds. So this ability allows you to pour volcanic energy into the mag of whatever weapon you have equipped, giving all the bullets in the magazine an extra burning damage effect. The sixth ability is called Heat Absorption. This ability allows you to pick on a certain enemy, 
where you will rip a portion of their life which in turn will heal you. You will also pull them towards you and inflict the ash status on them. The seventh ability is called Phaser Beam. Fire an energy beam that deals damage that benefits from 125% of status power, inflicting burn and causing interrupt to enemies hit by the beam as well as enemies within a small radius around you. And the eighth ability guys is called Eruption. Here you create a volcanic eruption beneath the selected enemy, dealing damage to them and all enemies within a small radius around that target. So the Pyromancer is a very exciting class where it seems to offer a lot in terms of status effects, damage over time and area of effect abilities. It is a class I feel will be a fan favourite and one I feel will definitely be, if used right, one of the most powerful in the game. Ok so let's move on to the Technomancer. So the Technomancer is a long range support specialist that possesses the best healing abilities of all four classes. It also utilises a wide range of deadly contraptions. This is a class that said will appeal to a wide range of players due to the class's versatility but at the same time will better suit players who pay special attention to the flow of combat beyond just that raw damage. This is by far the support role class for this game, also with added abilities to help assist and even heal allies. The Technomancer also has a unique combination of archetypes and skills. At its core, the Technomancer is a long range specialist with perks to enhance its sniping skills and damage output. But one of the Technomancer's main features is the ability to conjure up weapons and gadgets made from scraps discarded across the worn torn battlefields including missile turrets, rocket launchers, miniguns and more people. So the Technomancer's class trait is increase long range weapon damage by 7.5%, increase skill life leech by 15% and increase weapon life leech by 15%. Its three skill trees you can build into are Pestilence, Tech Shaman and Demolisher. So the first one Pestilence, down this path you'll find the strength of your decay skills as well as sniper rifle and assault rifle enhanced, increasing your damage output to whatever happens to be in your hand. The tech shaman tree, this is best suited for those who love being a support, this buffs damage skills such as freezing and turrets, but it also enhances your healing skills and abilities, as well as granting you the ability to cheat death and automatically return from the grave during combat. And the third skill tree we have here is called Demolisher. This branch augments your gadgets and skills to provide extra buffs and bonuses each time you use them, making you much stronger and enhancing your toxic damage output. So across these three trees you can build the ultimate weapon. Also the Technomancer specialises in the freeze and decay statuses which will both immobilise and weaken the enemy respectively, which are unique to the Technomancer and perhaps best suited to its ability to fill any role. So with these 8 abilities too, adding to what's on offer here, I feel we have probably the all in one class. Those 8 abilities are Scrapnel, which is an anti-personal explosive that can be dropped as a proximity device. When enemies approach, the Scrapnel pops out of the ground and bursts into hundreds of pieces to damage all targets in the immediate vicinity. Next up we have the Cryo Turret. So the cryo turret can be dropped next to the player. The turret will shoot freezing bullets at enemies to slow them down. The third ability is called Pain Launcher. The Pain Launcher summons a devastating volley of highly explosive missiles to rain down fire on your enemies in a straight line. The fourth ability is called Fixing Wave, the only ability in this game which does the following. So Fixing Wave gives you the ability to heal allies but can also be used to repair any active turrets you've dropped in the heat of combat. The fifth ability is called Blighted Rounds. Here you fill your current weapons mag with DK infused bullets that inflict toxic on that target. The sixth ability is called Tool of Destruction. Here pressing the button to activate the skill will conjure up a rocket launcher, while holding it will instead create a minigun to level the playing field. The seventh ability is called Cold Snap. So the cold snap sees the player drop a device at their feet and instantly freezes all targets within a wide radius. And the eighth ability is called Blighted Turret. The Blighted Turret is a sort of putrid flamethrower that inflicts toxic on your enemies in wide sweeps. 
and people that is it for the techno months and what we know so far but it is in my opinion enough to persuade anyone that this isn't a class to be taken lightly and I have a feeling it might just be the most popular but we will see okay so lastly guys the four classes within Outriders we have the Trickster so the Trickster is a close range class that's fast and can easily hit and run targets can also bend the laws of space and time to appear out of nowhere, assassinate your enemy and return to safety in a blink of an eye. And that's what this offers people. The Trickster has been gifted control over space and time by the Anomaly, and this allows this class to be a close range specialist. Super quick and nimble, being able to gain and out of combat really quickly, dealing massive damage and disappearing before the enemy even knows it's been hit. So the Trickster's class trait is, when a shield is active, gain 15% damage mitigation. Heals the player for 20% of max health and gain 12% shield for each enemy that has died at close range. Its three skill trees are Master of Space, Harbinger and Assassin. With Master of Space, all abilities and perks in this line are about bonuses while on the move and dealing damage in close range, particularly with shotguns and SMGs. Harbinger, perks down this path are all about making a tanky build, enhancing your strength, shields and armor rating. And then we have Assassin, for that classic stealth build people. These perks enhance your abilities when using damage and movement powers, as well as upping the potency of your anomaly skills. So the Trickster is built around the archetype of the Rogue class. The Trickster is quick, it's formidable and a lethal tactician. And with the 8 special abilities we have here, it's a class which in my opinion will grab the attention of those runners and gunners, those fast paced players, people who love to be in the centre of that action, because that's what this class offers. Now its 8 abilities are Temporal Slice, here using a long blade of temporal energy protruding from your arm, this will deal huge damage to any enemy caught in the arc swing, also slowing them down and then erupting them with energy. The next ability is called Slow Trap, here the Trickster generates a large dome to which enemies and projectiles move incredibly slow while you and your allies are free to move about as usual. Third up we have Borrowed Time. While instantly gaining a percentage of health as shields, the Trickster leaves behind a clone prior to running into the fray to wreak havoc. The fourth ability is called Hunt and Prey. So this will allow you to teleport behind an enemy that you can see, automatically generating shields and causing the target to be slowed while you set up for that killing blow. The fifth ability is called Twisted Rounds. Here the Trickster infuses a current weapon with anomaly infused bullets that deliver an incredible powerful punch. These overclocked powerhouse rounds remain active until you reload or swap weapons. The sixth ability is called Round Slice. Here the Trickster conjures and controls a large blue crystal which travels from enemy to enemy dealing huge damage. The seventh ability is called Time Rift. This creates a shock wave that suspends enemies in the air, leaving them unable to fight for around 3.5 seconds and inflicts weakness. And the 8th ability is called Venator's Knife. Throw a temporal knife at an enemy. The blade will ricochet between a maximum of 5 enemies within a small radius, dealing damage and marking them. All marked enemies will be inflicted by slow and for 10 seconds the first damage dealt by you will be doubled. Pretty cool. So those are the abilities offered by the Trickster class, which I'm sure you would agree this class specialises in that super fast and effective close range combat, using amazing energy based arc power to destroy everything in its path. A path to a class which I won't lie, will probably be the one I start with, as it definitely seems to suit my playstyle best out of these four, but that's just me. But yeah guys, there we have it, everything each class offers without riders. I apologise I couldn't show every special ability or anomaly power, I mean it just simply ain't for each of them out there yet, only details. And it literally took me probably 4 or 5 days to put this video together due to the research I had to do into each class, so I hope you appreciate that people. And I also hope this video helps you decide in which class you might just play if you do get this game. If you're not planning on getting this game but just wanted to know a little bit of information or more of an insight into what this game is all about and what each class has to offer, well I hope it helped you out there too. But guys, the end of the video has arrived and on that note, 
I am out. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, it really helps me out. If you're new around here and want to see more Outriders, be sure to subscribe. And if you never want to miss a video I upload, you can turn notifications on by hitting that bell button. But guys, thanks as always for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully I will see you on that next one.